Okay, uh, our goal is to explore in an introductory manner um, some things called reciprocal reciprocal trig functions. And just looking at a few little conventions, and in fact, I'll do the second one first. Um, what I mean by conventions, if you ever see this sine squared theta, if you ever see that notation, or if you ever see this notation, cos squared theta. It actually means, for sine squared theta, it means sine theta all squared. And the second one means cosine of theta all squared. The advantage of um, having the notation as such is that you don't need brackets and there's no ambiguity there's no confusion. There's, it's not the angle squared, it's the result of sine theta squared. So that's something you will see and it's something you need to get used to. Now for what's called reciprocal trig functions. You know that with something like y equals x, the reciprocal is y equals 1 on x. So reciprocal is when we turn something over. It uh, it flips over as such to use loose terminology. Now with sine cos and tan, sine x, cosine x, and tangent x, so the sine ratio, cosine ratio, and the tangent ratio, or function, we can turn those upside down. So if we have, in fact, there's a graph just here of it, if we find the reciprocal of or the reciprocal function of sine x. We're basically looking for if f of x is sine x, what is the function called if we have 1 over f of x? And likewise with cos x, if f of x is cos x, what's 1 over f of x and tan? So the first one here is actually 1 over cos x. So it's the reciprocal function of cos x, and it's called sec for short, sec x. Sec x is short for secant of x, secant. So sec is an abbreviation for secant. And so it equals 1 over cos x. All right, which is not the same as cos of 1 on x. It does not mean that at all, because that's pertaining to the argument or the angle. Okay, this is the entire function has been flipped over. And it is not the same thing as inverse cos, which we will use in triangular trig a lot, for example. They are not the same things, okay? So don't get those confused. So to find sec x, we just go 1 divided by cosine of x, where cos x cannot equal 0. So there'll be some discontinuities, and you can see that there in the graph. In the blue, you'll, you have cos x, and... We know that various times cos x equals 0, so for example at pi on 2, and you can see the red graph which is sec x, and as that goes up it behaves asymptotically and there'll be a discontinuity there, and you can see that happens periodically. The next one is similar looking, but it's not exactly the same. When we go 1 over sine x, we get cosec x. Is the reciprocal trig function for sine x. Now don't, this is not an error, notice that the c for sine does not transfer to the c for cosec, the c for sine, uh, if we take the reciprocal of it, becomes s for sec, whereas s for sine, the reciprocal of that becomes c for cosec. So don't get uh, s goes with s and c goes with c in your head, that's not right. Okay, so uh, make sure you get that correct. By the way, this video is not aiming to prove, uh, do any proofs around these. That's for a, a different video, and it's not aiming to do any transformations of the curve 
or other behaviors it's just an introduction okay now for cosec equals 1 over sine it's true when sine x does not equal 0 as you can see all right now we have here what's called cot x which is the reciprocal of tan x, the reciprocal function to tan x where tan x does not equal 0. Now because uh, tan x equals sine x on cos x, we can say that cot x is cos x over sine x. Okay, where sine x does not equal zero. Cot is short for cotangent. It's the cotangent. So it's the reciprocal trig function of tan x. Now when when is it discontinuous? You can see some asymptotes there. When is sine equal to zero is the, is the main question you need to ask because that will make tan equal to zero and then we have an undefined situation. So sine um, x equals zero um, basically when x is equal to zero or pi radians or two pi. Okay so every time we have a multiple um, of including negative multiples 2 of pi and uh, or pi I suppose, I don't have to say 2 pi if I've said pi but basically we'll see this asymptotic behaviour with the red curve there so it'll approach but won't actually reach it. So there we have it, a quick introduction to some terminology conventions and reciprocal trig functions.